Hey, what up, guys? Coming to you with another What's Next. This is on my number three light heavyweight in the world. He is the former WBO light heavyweight champion, Elite Alvarez. Alvarez is currently um, Alvarez is currently um, in the four-man box off to determine the next WBO light heavyweight champ. The title is vacant. Canelo vacated it last year um, after he beat Kovalev, who had beaten Alvarez in their rematch last February to regain the title. Um, so Alvarez last fought in January. He took on little-known veteran Michael Seals and dominated him, scored a brutal seventh-round knockout win, and uh, kept himself in line for the tournament. He was supposed to face Gilberto Ramirez in the uh, in the semifinal of that box off but uh ramirez um ramirez uh never uh signed on for the box off because his uh, promotional issues that he's having with top rank right now is he's trying to get out of his contract so joe smith jr who had went in and upset jesse hart a week prior to alvarez's fight with michael seals uh he got a 10 round decision he got bumped in and he took gilberto ramirez's place and he'll be facing the leader alvarez now so we know Alvarez is competing in the four-man uh, box off. Um, he's going the, the winner of it, he's almost for sure facing Joe Smith Jr. next. Then the winner of uh, I think a guy's name is it might be Shumanov. I'm not 100 percent or some Russian fighter is taking on another uh, Eastern European fighter in Maxim Vlasov. He's facing off against him, and the winner of that, whoever comes out of that, is going to fight the winner of Alvarez and. Joe Smith for the vacant title could be the end of this year could be early next year but um Alvarez in my opinion I think he's the favorite to win the whole thing um he's a better boxer than Joe Smith and um I think he's gonna outbox Joe Smith and um possibly knock Smith out because he's got good sneaky power and um and I think he's gonna beat Joe Smith advance onto the semis um he's just more of a complete fighter and then I honestly think he beats either one of the Eastern European fighters in the finals and uh, becomes the light heavyweight champion again. So basically, his next two fights are locked up and it's probably going to take up this year and uh, all of this year at least, possibly his first fight of 2021. But if Alvarez comes out of all that, let's see what could be next after that. So this is the what's next on Elite or Alvarez. Let's start with the top 10. We go with, first off, undefeated, number one, undefeated unified champion, Arthur Betterbeev. So Betterbeev holds two belts. Um, I think, could him and Alvarez be possible towards the middle of next year, second half of next year? I mean, it depends on what Betterbeev does um, prior to that. But yeah, I mean, Betterbeev is likely going to be the favorite against anybody that he faces. He's facing Ming Fanlong next for the, uh, uh, you know, at, at his IBF mandatory defense. Likely going to get through that one. After that, he was already talking about a unification with Dimitri Bival, uh to add a world title. Now, if he comes out of that, if, if he's still champion and he has three belts, even if he only has two, I think he's going to be going after, if he still only has two, he's going to be going after a unification bout. So, um, and with Alvarez being signed with top rank, and so is better be if, I think there's a very good chance better be if an Alvarez could be fighting sometime next year in a unification bout. So, yeah, I definitely think these two guys could lock horns. Um, number two is a third fight with Sergey Kovalev. I mean, anything's possible. I think Al Alvarez would definitely take the fight. Would Kovalev, though? Kovalev has talked already about moving up to, one, uh, to cruiserweight. But does he really want to put on that much weight and face guys that hit even harder when he's already slowed down? I mean... If he's going to continue his career at all, I think he should continue it at light heavyweight. I know maybe the weight is tough to make, but I think he has a better chance beating the guys that are here at 175 than moving all the way up to 200. So by next year, if Alvarez is the world champ and Kovalev is still banging around and hasn't lost the fight, because I think, honestly, if Kovalev loses one more, he's probably done. He's, he's fought all the big fights. He's got uh, some big wins. Um, I don't think he'd have anything else to prove. And by next year, he's probably, I think he's going to be like 37 in that area. So would he go after a rubber match with Alvarez? If he's still banging around 175, then absolutely. I think the possibility is there, um, you know, to regain the world title, which would be, I think that'd be his fourth time becoming the light heavyweight champion. 
yeah, I definitely think that's possible. So I, I do think that's that could be an option for Alvarez next year. Now Alvarez is currently number three, number four, Dimitri Bivol. Another one, Alvarez has never shied away from going after, uh, you know, from taking on bigger fights. Um, you know, when he was with the PBC, he was just, he didn't take the bigger fights because he kept wanting the fight with Adonis Stevenson that never happened. So um, that's why he got desperate and took on Kovalev and it led to the biggest win of his career. Now, if Bavall is still getting avoided next year and Alvarez comes out of it as the, you know, as a world champion and he can't get another I didn't fight. I that he has diabetes I did. he's hosting a fast food show. I did not say any of that. In fact, I think he I said I was proud of the Discovery like, Channel for hiring somebody like with Bavall diabetes. Next, you know, or next year? I think so. I think he'd be down. I mean, I know it's Matchroom and the PBC. Um, you know, uh, uh, getting together, I'm match room and top rank, I'm sorry, getting together, but I think it'd be possible just to unify belts, but I really think uh, that fight's probably not gonna come to fruition because I think Better is gonna get the crack at Bivol before Alvarez does, but you never know. Better Bev might have a shot at Kovalev, you know? I mean, Kovalev plays a major role if he decides to stay at 175, because Kovalev can demand pretty much anybody he wants at 175, because he's got the name, the name recognition, and he looks more beatable now. So I really think uh, there's a chance, you know, at this fight, you never know, it could be possible next year. Number five would be a showdown with Oleksandr Wojcik. Absolutely possible, they're both with top rank. Um, Wojcik should be getting back to his winning ways. He's probably gonna try to get himself back in line for a title shot. I absolutely think him and Alvarez would be a good fight. It could happen next year. Number six is, um, number six is Jean Pascal. Yeah, I mean, I think that'd be a, a, a good fight that makes a lot of sense. You know, um, I believe Alvarez fights out of uh, Canada now, so I, I'd like to see it. I think that'd be an interesting fight right here, if, especially if Pascal's still the WBA regular champion. Personally, I think uh, Pascal's going to lose that title to Badu Jack. And then next year, I mean, you know, like I said, if Alvarez is waiting around for an opponent or he can't get a decent opponent to take him on, which I find that hard to believe. There's a lot to choose from. I think Pascal would make sense if Pascal still wants to get it done, so we'll see. Um, number number seven is Marcus Brown. If Marcus Brown moved himself in line for a title shot, this fight's definitely possible. I, and I and I you know, but I think it would have to be a mandatory fight because um, this is top rank working with the PBC, so it'd have to be a mandatory fight. But anything's possible next year. I think Marcus Brown definitely will be in play. Um, Yeah, no problem. And then um, after after Marcus Brown, we got former champion, former two division champion, Badu Jack. Um, I don't know. I don't know if this fight's possible. I mean, I'd like to see it, but I don't know if Jack uh, by next year would would want to face um, Elite or Alvarez. I think that it's a fight that the two would um, really have to get their promoters uh, top rank in the PBC to work together. So I'd lean towards a less likely, but um, Jack might want a big a bigger name opponent and. Maybe they can get a deal done. So I think I don't think it's going to happen, but I think it's possible. Number nine, Gilberto Ramirez. I mean, if Ramirez works out a deal with top rank and, and continues his career, then yeah, anything's possible next year. I mean, Ramirez might be the guy waiting around for the winner of the, the four-man box of the tournament. So we'll see. And then finally at number 10 is Joe Smith Jr. Well, Alvarez is facing Joe Smith Jr. next almost for sure. I, that, that fight seems to be a go. I think Alvarez is going to win, but it could go either way. I think it's going to be a good fight. Um, I'm favoring Alvarez, but we'll see. It should be interesting. So that's it. That's the what's next on Elite or Alvarez, the former WBO light heavyweight champion. Um, yeah, and hopefully, again, a two-time world champ. So we'll see. All right, guys, that's it. That's true boxing. You've been hit with the truth.